Hello friends, this is a poem I wrote yesterday, Friday, July 16, 2010. Started writing at 9 in the morning and concluded at 4 in the afternoon. Wrote it in four parts, taking a break between parts. The title is, We Must Therefore Conclude. Now, between my big ears, a tribunal convenes in a made-for-TV movie montage of scenes, and the prosecutorial staff grins and preens as their colleague whips through her summation. We must therefore conclude that he isn't all there for his family or friends, and he seems unaware of the train wreck he's causing, that doomed laissez-faire of inaction, distraction, oblation. We must further conclude he will further withdraw to that dream world within which a bright foo makes a mockery of the extent of the law he's disdained or put to abnegation. We must lastly conclude, as the matter now stands, that a radical shift in the program demands that his free will be stripped taken out of his hands till he's racked up a fair compensation. With a nod to the judges, she strides to her seat with a confident air, full of vigor and heat. And my public defender fair reeks of defeat. So I tell him, you're fired in frustration. I rise as my PD is escorted out and unblanken my mind, just within, not without, and approaching the judges, three men, white and stout, say, do you have identification? You look just like me, sure, the court of my mind, and you're all sitting on my enlarded behind. I defy you to tell me that justice is blind or my guilt will get fair dispensation. I have felt guilty as sin since before I was seven, with weight on my conscience without let or leaven, and should I attain an improbable heaven, the guilt will still compass my station. It's true my life's taken dysfunctional turns, and some of my choices left chemical burns, the lot of the artist as cold chaos churns is to mirror the world's consternation. Compassionate tortoises, I and John Dunn, and we pale at the wielding of napalm and gun, diminishing as our killed innocents. One is too many, and this generation now I had the attention of court, lay, and press, and a genuine catch in my throat to address such an issue so central to what must depress joy itself gives a bell rung sensation. It is clear that we're of an inelegant race, and it may well be eons till we find our place with the starborn by unhook and uncrook and grace, but less clear is the proper conflation of the energy, will, ingenuity, force that will budge us above shame beyond mere remorse, though the clues are all there in divergent discourse how to fulcrumize such elevation. All endeavors that lift us are noble indeed, enlightening outlook and quickening seed to be planted in hearts and minds, growing a creed that holds harmlessness high and elation. And then, of necessity, out go the schemers, the profit for someone's loss, go to extremers, and in their place blissful utopian dreamers, 
and there is my life's destination. Here's the long story short. We must therefore conclude that the life I have led is so far misconstrued as a frittering waste and a spill of the crude in a self-indulged versification. While I freely admit I'm no saint nor a martyr and ever so fond of the grape and the larder, still I work and no concert violist works harder to give human life clarification. In my sonnet, Sestina's and thousandfold musing with the ultimate goal to unravel confusing, to answer wills whether tis nobler recusing with volumes of clear affirmation. If my efforts in vain, still the effort's been made from broad daylight past midnight in soft fusillade and I've given my utmost, though mostly unpaid. If I lie, I'll take defenestration. The sweat that fell into my eyes was salt stinging. Said the three, works for me. Then my ears took to ringing. The courtroom went blank, and I too, but was bringing sweet, Sigh of relief, divination. Thank you for listening, friends. That's all there is. There ain't no more.